So, 1.2 has finally been released tomorrow. It is a long-awaited KSP update that brings in naturally many new features. Most notable of these, however, is the new probe telemetry system. In case you weren't aware, this is going to act much in the same way that the remote tech mod works, in that you're going to need to establish some kind of communication satellite network, um, either around Kerbin and or in the greater solar system, in order to try and make contact and like sustain contact with your probes um, and your unmanned missions in general as they travel deeper and further into the Kerbal system on your exploratory missions, whatever you want to call it. Of course, though, you probably knew that already, because you've probably already played the 1.2 pre-release that's available for the public and has been for the past couple of weeks to help squad with squashing bugs, finding glitches, all that sort of thing that they did with the 1.1 pre-release. And it's definitely a very good thing, and I hope you guys really did enjoy that pre-release. I sadly haven't been able to enjoy this pre-release, uh, not because it's bad or anything, um, purely simply because I haven't really had enough time. Well, well actually, there's two reasons. Firstly, obviously, like I just said, I've had no time. College has hit me like like a camel. Like, if you've, if you've ever seen a camel or a horse, I think a horse is probably a better analogy, a horse sort of kick you in the face um, in terms of, like, work and stuff getting back. Um, that's why. And that's why you haven't seen a video on my channel for about, well, three, three weeks or so now. Uh, which I do apologise for, but obviously college just does have to come first, obviously. But the second reason, and I think this is a bit evident in the gameplay here, is that I'm going to miss Kerbal Space Program uh, with without the telecommunication system mechanic. I mean, yeah, sure, you'll be able to turn it off and be able to play it like this in the um, final release of the game when 1.2 does drop tomorrow, but obviously this is going to be on by default, and you know me, I'm lazy, I'm probably not going to go into the settings and change it, so for one last time before 1.2 uh, actually came out, I decided to do something that a couple of years ago, or in fact even a couple of months ago, I would have deemed impossible for my skill set. I wanted to go and land on Elu. Not just land on Elu though. I wanted to see if I could land on Elu, making use of a few small engines and a limited amount of fuel, but mainly an ion engine. You guys know me and my history with Ion Engines. I think I've used them once before, and that was more just of a sort of experiment thing. I just basically wanted to see how far out I could get using gravity assists using that Ion Engine. I did this video a few months ago now, and it didn't really go well. I just sort of pinged around the Kerbal system. Eventually, I think I wound up at Jewel at the end of the day. It didn't really have a set destination, just sort of wound up there at the end because I didn't really know how to use these things. I'm I'm a notoriously inefficient player. Um, I will just tend to use the most the biggest engines or to get to my destination as quickly as possible and then get home as quickly as possible and then stuff starts going wrong and you guys have seen my missions, you know the drill by this point. But I wanted to see if it was within my skill set to actually get out to the furthest planet in the Kerbal system and be patient with the iron engines because the burn does take a long time because this thing has about as much thrust as a fart, a really horrible fart as well, not like a, a good proper solid one. It's more sort of a, a, a crap fart to be honest. But I wanted to see if I could actually use patience and actually achieve something rather, rather impressive. And I think I did, which is probably one of the more surprising things. Um, I was mind-numbingly bored throughout the whole vast majority of this mission. In fact, if you listen closely to the game audio, I have turned it down slightly, you may be able to hear some YouTube videos sort of gabbling away at sort of high speed, because obviously it's at four times normal speed, because I accidentally left my mic on when I'm recording this. So I was actually watching YouTube videos and stuff. Some of the burns took like... 20 minutes to do and that was at four times physics acceleration as well like this one you're seeing here now is us falling into elu orbit this took like 20 minutes i'm not even kidding i was able to watch like a small documentary in that time while while doing this and it, the whole process was just so time consuming but thankfully i've sort of cut out the worst bits for you and you can see here we're just slowly but surely falling into elu orbit it takes forever ever, because Elu's gravity is only slightly higher than the moon's. Um, I think it might be about the same. So it does take a long time when you're traveling from interplanetary speeds, especially so far away from the sun, to actually get caught into Elu's orbit. But we do eventually manage it. Now with the introduction of the Comnet feature in 1.2, 
Um, you'll have to put out like a relay network before you can even send any kind of probe. Obviously, you could probably still send a Kerbal mission there, an actual manned mission, and you'd probably be fine. Um, but for like probe missions like this, ones that where you perhaps you don't want to kill Kerbals, it's going to be a lot harder to actually send them to the more distant planets like Jewel and, and Elu now. So I thought I'd try and do this one last time before it becomes so complicated that perhaps I might get put off actually doing it. I also wanted to give you guys a decent piece of content because... Well, I don't think that's happened very often on this channel in, in recent months because I just haven't had the time to produce decent content and the decent content that I have produced has taken very a very long time to make. Speaking of decent content as well, the second part of Juno Horizon is in production, don't worry, I've started getting the cinematics and the music together. That should be out within the next couple of weeks. I wanted to get it out this week, but sadly, uh, college had other ideas. And it's also my 18th birthday next week, so probably might, won't be this week or the next either, but hopefully I should be able to get out by the end of October. Fingers crossed, anyway. If you're ever curious about what I'm doing when I'm not making videos and all that sort of stuff, I do strongly recommend you go follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, the links to both will be at the bottom of the description, along with some other social media guff that I hardly use, but it's mainly Twitter and Instagram. Um, I recommend you follow me on there because you can sort of follow what I'm doing and you can see that I do, in fact, have a life. Which is uh, hard to believe, I know, bearing in mind I spend most of my time in front of a computer. But, um, it's, it's kind of cool, so if you want to come down and party with us, then uh, be sure to follow me on those two platforms down there. But as you can see, we have now made it to Elu and we've begun our deorbit burn down to the surface. Now, what I wanted to do here was initially use the ion engine to sort of slow our descent so that we could pass uh, fairly close to the surface and then fire up my four little fuel engines. I think they're called Raptor engines, but I'm not... No, they're not called Raptor engines. That's the name of the SpaceX ones. <laughs> I'm such an idiot with these sorts of things. But the little radial engines, anyway, the Rockamax ones, uh, to sort of slow our descent somewhat. And um, miraculously, it worked. And I actually uh, think I called the amount of fuel that I needed pretty much exactly as well. Um, you can see here we're doing pretty much a suicide burn descent here, killing the majority of our velocity, but leaving some horizontal left just so that we can... Uh, just so we can get ourselves down. And we're slowly going to start to descend now. We've arrested it all. Um, short burst now with the engine because I see the fuel starting to get a little bit on the tight side. Coming down a little fast, but I end up overcompensating just a little bit. And we end up bunny hopping just a little bit above the surface. But I think we eventually manage it and... Oh, there we go. One more time. And touchdown right on the iron engine. It was a perfect touchdown. But guys, thanks very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Yeah, Juno Horizon will be out soon, and until next time, peace out.